one. And we are live. But back at it, Doug Life Ascension number two, to talk about the dark side of love, everybody. Something we all here have in common, Gypsy, Striker, T-A-W-D, and myself, is that we've all been in that toxic relationship, and we've all managed to get out of it. Some of us might still be in it. I'm looking at you, Tad. I'm not in it. I'm not <laughs> going like, yeah. <laughs> What's going on with you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, was... I, don't, I don't have that toxic. Ta- you, need to talk more, you need to talk better into that mic, first oh, you, of all, you so can't people hear me? can hear you. Okay. No, they can, but mm-hmm. make right. sure you're talking into it nice here. But, dude, when I think about my toxic relationships, how awful they were, they were actually some of the best things that ever happened to me, because then I was able to know what I don't fucking want in a relationship anymore. I feel like everybody has to have just one really toxic relationship, where it's just the... <laughs> well, <laughs> Dad, dad's laughing, it's just the worst. So, but it, like, I, the first thing we got to ask, though, is, like, how, how do you define a toxic relationship? What, what makes a relationship toxic, right? What's, what's are you, what are some of your guys' like, personal opinions on that? Because I feel like that, that's something different for everyone. Well, when I think of the word toxic, I think of toxic waste, right? And what does that do? It toxic ruins waste? You. Yeah, something that's toxic. It, it takes anything good away from you. It ruins you. It destroys you. So. You know, some people think of toxic as, you know, like passion and this and that, but that's really not the case, in my opinion. I think toxic is just something that ruins you. I agree. I mean, yeah, pretty much. It's just a relationship that you don't want to be in, you know, things are going right. And whether you can do something about it or not, it just doesn't feel good. So it's, it's more than when the relationship just like isn't going right, though. Right? Yeah. Like, it's like you people like I, I can be toxic at times. Like some of my toxic traits, I can I tend to get in these like little bickering things with my fiance right now, which is like barely scratching the surface compared to other toxic relations I've been in. I mean, I'm talking about the toxic relations where it's like, you know, how your woman acts around other men when you're not around or even how she acts when she <laughs> how your girl acts when how your girl acts like to other men and like. When you're with her, like in her own surroundings too, or whatnot. Has that happened that, to you? Like, no, that's blowing my mind here. That's never happened to me. In before. the past, in the past, at parties and shit, like, you will see your woman talking to some dude, and you're like, "Wow, it's like she's talking to me when we first I'm not, met." No, but I'm not even like super controlling like that. Where it's like, "Oh, you can't talk to other dudes." But there's obviously there's like right. there's, there's boundaries. Respect though, is what I'm saying. There's like there's definitely like a level of respect that you have to meet at the end For of sure. the day on that. But it could be. For sure. Let's let's go both ways. Males can do wrong too. Like, it's just your partner. If your partner's not showing respect and disrespecting you, and you know, just not showing true care and, and love, like, I don't. I think that's toxic. They're nagging on you, you know, stuff like that. What do yeah. you guys think? Come on. It really depends. Like in that situation, what they're saying. Like, to be honest, I don't really care what my wife says to you, whether I'm in the room or across the country. Yeah. I know who I married, and if I didn't know, I wouldn't have married her in the first place. Right. And that's crucial when it comes to marriage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you've been with your wife for a long time oh, now, God. too. Ten plus years? Yeah, years I now? think the same girl since as long as I've known you. And that was yeah. probably, I met you like about ten years ago now. Yeah. Crazy. So, Crazy. So, dude, you, it sounds like you got it figured out. Because I've had my fair share of toxic relationships in between there. And the only good thing about them was the sex. There's something about that toxic. <laughs> <laughs> dude, oh, dude, there's something about that fucking toxic sex, dude. And I actually would say that's the only reason you end up staying with that person for such a long time because the, the, the sex is so good and you feel like you can't get that passion like anywhere else. Uh, let me say something to you, Striker. <laughs> okay. The reason why he's saying what you're saying, I'm thinking, because you know what you're what. You probably know your wife is not going to say some of the messed up stuff that some toxic women or males would say. For sure. So that's why you're like, I don't care what she said, because he knows she's not going to say it. Pretty much. That's, that's what it is. I so, mean, <laughs> but that comes from years of knowing who you're dealing with, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, marriage is such a tricky and scary thing to begin with, especially for guys these days. I mean, there's so many girls talking about, I don't want to marry you unless you marry, make a hundred grand. And, mm, mm-hmm. But none of these women are going to the altar virgins. So I guess they want us to be fuckboys or yeah. I don't know what they're trying to say. 
But either way, like, you know, these days, like just recently, my buddy, he's got a special needs kid. His girl, That's uh, tough. Yeah, his wife decided to divorce him. She took his house. He pays 1200 bucks a month, still pays most of the bills for his kid. Yeah. And but there's two sides to every story, right? Like your buddy, he... He's got nothing. Dude, <laughs> he had to have some skeletons in his closet. <laughs> or not there. If he is, he ain't mentioning or it. Or like, but it, it, maybe it's not skeletons, but at the same time, like, I do feel like it's your job as a man to make sure you keep that fire going when you're in that relationship after being around. Both to hold, hold on. Hold. Oh, okay. No, no. You oh, need dude, to stop right now. On, wait, wait, yeah, wait. I don't oh, like where he's oh, going yeah, with this. No, no. <laughs> Can I finish, dude? Can I finish, please? Can I finish? Okay, go think ahead. Of, like, think of, like, think of back when you first get in a relationship with a girl. When you're on the chase, right? When there's that girl that you like, you're on the chase, and you're just like, you try, to, phase. you try to be fun and fucking entertaining, and you want to, like, just keep, and you want to, like, just keep that fire going, you know? Eventually, we get bored. This, everyone gets bored of doing something anyway. It, it absolutely goes both ways, sure. right? But you should take it in. You sh- it should be your responsibility to make your relationship, like, as hot as it can, to keep the flames going, keep the flames burning, I should say, for as long as you can. Because once they go out, dude... It's almost impossible to get back. No, and I feel like, and then that's when people who are in those really long term relationships, they end, up, they end up breaking up. But at the same, and like, that's why I propose to my girl, because I know that she's just loyal like that. And I think, like, even if, like, all flames are still fucking burning bright, but I think if they ever were to go out, I know she wouldn't leave me just because she knows, like, this, that's my husband. Let me you know, know. we're going to have a kid together. Like, this I is my so. family. You know, yeah, I so. Like, this is my family. Well, you, you know don't have I mean? much like, of a choice at this point. Let, like, as soon as you say I do, like, your nuts are in her hands. Yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me ask you this. Like, after you're in a relationship for a while, it's not always going to be like that. They're not always going to be, like, flames. You, the relationships require work, mm-hmm. you know, and compromise. And if... If, you, if that person's going to get bored with you, then they're not the right one, you know? You have to realize, like, it's not going to always be, like, hot passion. As things go older, things get old, like you guys were saying. But you right. chose to be with that person. That's that's just how things are. You're not going to be uh, sky, you know, jumping out of planes and shit every weekend and stuff like that, you know, keeping it hot. It just doesn't work that way. People grow up. Yeah. You know, they have right. things to do. Indeed. You know, what do you, What do you think? gypsy come on tell me your opinion (laughs) i think that you can still have a lot of flames and passion without the toxicness and i know people say oh well you know the sex is uh, good with toxic but like me and my husband i mean we were both ex-toxic people we came together we have a a really healthy relationship and i i feel like our sex is even so much more the fact that we trust and love each other and we role play and we do a lot of things but that passion that you have with someone that you know is only with you that loves you that's been there from you for like really hard times you like there's nothing that compares to that not someone that you fucking were fighting with five minutes ago that that intensity of passion but a lot of people i feel like can't let go or be vulnerable enough with someone to ever feel that Mm, I, I so like, I think yeah. that's why people like the that's the crazy sex they, they've had mm-hmm. is that when you're mad at someone because you've never fully let go and really let someone in and that, that really in, in strong intensity of passion when you, you trust someone. Do you think uh, with society today that more, pe- more or less people Get are letting there. go? Like, Fuck, like th- people don't even kiss when they have sex nowadays, I heard. Sh- How do you like not even kiss someone? It's so... I mean, our society, I feel like, is like relationship and love wise, is like going to hell in a handbag. Like, oh, I think a sure. lot. And this is a woman for saying sure. this. For sure. This is a woman oh, saying for this. For sure. Let me ask you this, so Stryker. So true. Let me ask you this, Stryker. Stryker. Who, Tat, talk a little closer. Who initiated that divorce? She did. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. It's, it's almost always the women leaving these days. Yeah. Well, you yeah. know, back yeah. when I was young, I had never even heard of a woman cheating. Like, it was just almost unheard of. It was a thing that almost never... If it did happen a lot, I never heard about it. Like, and then all of a sudden, it's like the other way around, and it's, it's kind of nuts. What do, what do you think caused that? Like, what do you think's causing... Well, women war- finally understand their power, I'm guessing. <laughs> it, attention. Now, we live in a, such a society where attention matters so much that... And it, think about it. A girl could post a picture on Instagram or whatever and get attention... 
a guy could go on Snapchat and put something, get attention. And now if someone's busy or not feeling good or whatever for five minutes, someone is like, fuck you, I'll get attention from someone else. And it's just this con- ongoing cycle where men think women cheat, women think men cheat. And, it, you know, like a lot of guys that do that type of stuff be like, oh, well, all women are hoes, so I'm doing it too. And then the women think the guys yeah. are. Yeah. You know, and it's just, I personally, the, like, I love my husband so much. And it's like, I wish more people could have, like, real love. I do. It's sad. But there's one thing, and I was telling to you about this tad earlier, and I want to get your guys' opinion, there's one thing that holds people back from that. And I feel like if most people could let go of this, they, they could have a really great relationship. I mean, nothing's ever perfect, but it could be really great. What do you think that is? Well, uh, what is that? Ego. Oh, I told you that. Yeah. Ego. Yeah, but I, w- I want to hear what people you were going to say. Go the- oh, hold on. Well, I want to touch – I got to talk to something just about, like, what you said about, like, want people – always craving attention right yeah people need to start being more appreciative and uh, grateful for sacrificing right when I, when I when i say that i mean like so i work a full-time job i'm still bartending on the weekend and and i'm doing this on the side because like i want to grow this you know my girl sees that i'm out there hustling trying to make money for us because when she she's going to get to that point where she's not going to be able to work you know what i mean so i need to be that provider now, does she wish she could? I was around more, so we could spend more time together. Of course, she does. I fucking I wish I was like that too. But she gets like she understands that sh- she's willing to sacrifice time with me so I can go out there and be that provider that she needs me to be for our family. Not enough, like to like nowadays people they don't appreciate somebody sacrificing for work or sacrificing for time like that. Like you being like really busy nowadays. They get upset about that. I definitely. Agree. We're actually going through the same thing like, right now. And it goes like both, and it goes both ways, obviously. But like, right. that's something like I'm really grateful for, actually, because it, it does affect her, and it does affect relationships. When like, if one if one person is fucking like all, working like eighty hours a week, and you, it's hard to be in a relationship with someone who's that fucking busy. You know, it is. Like, but if you can appreciate like the sacrifices that that person's making, and if you're like the person in uh, uh, if you're like me, the dude out there working the shit ton, you got to appreciate that, like, damn, like, my girl, she's still staying in my side, like, holding down the house, doing all these things, waiting for me, letting me go out there, like, being the man that I need to be mm-hmm. right now. Like, that, that's why I got down on one knee, because I, I don't waste time fucking chasing around pussy anymore, like, fucking around being single, like, I'm with someone who does respect the grind and is willing to sacrifice like some time with me so I can go out there and be that provider. Too many, like, that's what I want to say. Like, what you about, like, talking about, like, people always craving attention, right? And, uh, they don't appreciate, yeah. like, people sacrificing their time anymore. Yeah, there's something I want to add to that, too. And it's funny because I was literally just talking to Tad about this as well. Um, so my husband recently started his own company. And... Like, when you start your own company and you're an entrepreneur, it's no fucking joke. It's a lot it's of work. It's 24-7. It's 24-7. <laughs> and, and you may not, ma- and you probably won't make a lot of money at first. Like, just starting out. And it, it's like, hard because there's certain deals and this and that. But, you know, the fact that he wakes up every day and he has me to say, you know what? I love you. You got this. It doesn't matter. You know, because yeah. so many things. And I, and I thought about it. And if... We were in a situation where every day I'm snapping on him and mad and jealous and like, oh, you're talking to someone on the phone that's a female, that's a realtor, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, if I was like that, he would never be able to be successful. Mm -hmm. And I think there's nothing more important than having a woman that believes in a man's dreams and that supports him his understanding. I'm pregnant, but sometimes I'll just sit in the room and watch TV. That's okay because he has to make calls, and I understand that. Yeah. You know, you can't, like you said, a lot of women just want it all, and you can't do that. You have to be Mm -hmm. understanding to your partner and supportive. You can't expect your man to go out there and be a provider for you, your kids, and, like, when he's the only one working, and then expect him to be, I don't know, to be around, like, showing you that attention 24-7 either. You like, can't. Let's ask the married guy because I know. Yeah, this, let's ask the no, married guy. Because when, when I first when I worked with this guy, dude, dude, you had like three fucking jobs. He was holding down Ruby Tuesdays. You were doing that fucking armored truck money <laughs> shit for a while too. Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, I gotta say, back in the day, it was it just felt like it was 
I was raised by my grandparents, so watching them grow up, you know, you can literally set your watch by my grandmother making my grandfather breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He always got the biggest cut of meat. He was always fed first. He was always taken care of the best because yep. she understood that if he's not well, shit's going to go bad. I don't feel like it's like that anymore. And if it mm. is, it's really rare. And I just yeah. wish it was the stereotype. But the stereotype is happy wife, happy life. Do whatever my wife says and hope to God she still has sex with me. Yeah, that's <laughs> sad. I, that's I, the worst part of marriage, I believe. But if it's even half of what she just said, fuck yeah, there's nothing you can't do. You can take over the world if you got a mm-hmm. wife like that. Yep. You got a woman that's got your back and you're not worried and she's not worried and she's always saying encouraging things when you wake up and she's got your back and you're not even thinking negative about your wife in any way, shape, or form. That's a fucking blessing. And there's not <laughs> there's not many women like that. Very I, I rare. Actually, well, I actually heard a different saying now. It's I, I mean, I heard a happy wife, happy life, but I also heard happy king, happy kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> that, so, would be nice. because, that would be nice. Well, happy the king, reason why I say kingdom. this is because if you have a wife that supports you and you can concentrate on building, men like to build their legacy. It's sure. simple as that. You know, we want to have kids and spread our seed, but we also want a legacy. We, we want something to, for us to remember by, you know? Mm-hmm. And if you can have a wife that, like, the right wife can propel a man. Or the right woman can propel a man to or higher levels. <laughs> yep, but that's the other thing. I and feel I like think my there's girl more makes me better. There's more right, women yeah. out there that I feel will destroy men. Like you should but that's if you're opinion. in a relationship right now and your partner isn't making you a better person, you you should seriously take a step back and honestly reevaluate things. What one like, thing and I cause I learned that's a lesson that took me a really long time to learn. Like because I, I would just always be in relationships for the wrong reason. And a lot of that because it was just I was naive. I was younger. I just wanted to party or to like, you know, fuck around and do bullshit. But when I look back, no, but like, no, one, no girl ever really made me a better man. And I don't think a lot of women want to make their partner a better man either. And I, <laughs> I really don't know. That's why I'm interested to hear what she's got to yeah. say. Because <laughs> it's so rare to hear women talk like that. I just yeah. want to know why you want to do it and... Other women kind of are like, F that. I got better things to do. Well, that's what, why we got Gypsy here. She what can spit I, Why I want to do what? Why, you know, why, just why you be that good, good woman. Man. Yeah, why you want to make uh, your man better. Your man better. Because I and love not him. Only and why, I, I but see, how you do it. Well, I see who he is. You know what I mean? And, like, I see what growing up in society and, you know, certain cultures and whatnot bring along these stereotypes and I see him as different than that different than you know he's a real really attractive male so it just oh I get bitches and party and you know what I mean and he never was really you know around influence of entrepreneurs of like you can have your own business of that and just having him realize his true self because he has it in him he just was never you know taught that like he He's a really great husband, but he would never been to therapy before. He was never taught certain things. And so I had to go when I started, like at first I'd be frustrated, like if we got in a fight, how I felt like how he acted, you know, but I had to re- go in and realize he's never, he never taught how to talk about his emotions. He ne- was never taught any of this stuff. And when I changed my mind to be understanding and I talked through it, and if he got mad just because he got mad, I didn't get mad and react, he started changing. And it, sometimes you got to set an example for, for how to behave. And honestly, being the bigger person is probably one of the hardest fucking things I've ever done in my life. Yeah. And especially, you know, when you're pregnant and but it, it's really changing him. And sometimes you meet people and I know you can't change people, but he really did want to be the best his best self. And when they someone wants that and you want that for them, you can come together and make that happen. But they also have to want it for themselves. But I think because how you are, it makes him want to be a better man. Well, of course. It Who makes him it? the better man. It makes yeah. him, but it doesn't it make him want to be it, the better man. It, it automatically makes yeah, him. Yeah, it makes man. him, but internally, he's like, I want to be a better man, you know, like subconsciously. Like, like how you said, like, you, you, you've been doing a lot of stuff since mm-hmm. what you're dealing with, you know? It's, yeah. When, you have, when you're around the right people, it makes you want to become better. Like, he's obviously going to want to protect you more. 
you know, make sure he does good for you because you support him. Like, that's just natural ma- male instinct. And when you know you got sure. someone supporting you and loving you, it makes – it lets you focus on other things in life, like your career, like your health. Because when I think about it, like everything you just said, when I look back at, like, my toxic relationships and the unhealthy ones, my main focus was fucking pleasing them. It was always making sure – they're happy. Always making sh- like, did I do something wrong? Always trying to get like a little bit of attention from them. That's where all my fucking time and energy went to them. The fucking energy vampires. Like, it's not. It should be the opposite. Yeah, it's hard to become like, successful. Like, you should be with someone who, and, and like then who makes your main focus like on becoming a better person, not just not fucking all just. Getting dumped on on them. I don't know. I'm having fucking flashbacks, dude. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> I can't, even fucking, can't even fucking talk right now. Like, I got yeah. fucking, having fucking memories pop back in my head. People try to say toxic is sexy. Okay, when you're in a toxic relationship, you probably got a cracked fucking phone. Maybe a cracked <laughs> windshield. No, I'm serious. You probably are missing a few nails. Yeah. You know what I mean? you fighting all the fucking time. Your hair looks like shit. You haven't went to the gym because you missed your class because you were, you were fighting on the phone. Like, wh- when you see a lot of these girls, like, on Instagram. Yeah, that are, slash tires. No, I'm just yeah, kidding. No, that are, like, really attractive and have their hair and their nails done. You don't see them with in the toxic relationships. They're with nice, normal guys because when if you're in a toxic relationship, you don't fucking look good. Let me tell you something. You look I, like you honestly uh, look kind of like a drug addict because you're just strung out all the time from fighting. Toxic relationships are like men. Man, first of all, <laughs> yes, they are. You look like shit. <laughs> first of all, we don't know if they're in good relationships because they're not gonna. Those girls on Instagram, they're going to make sure their picture looks good before they... They could have just got posted. busted right. a but bunch of nails and, and their hair could be look, they're like, damn, I got to put a picture up so I can find someone else, you know? Make me look all cute and get some attention, you know? You, you know I'm what I'm saying, talking you about. You can't be traveling you know all the time about. and looking yeah. pristine yeah. if you're constantly yeah. fucking fighting with someone. Yeah, yeah. You I think can't. what you just said is the perfect segue to, like, the next kind of section I want to talk about, about everyone listening. And that's like, what are the signs that you're in a toxic relationship? What are some of the red flags that we can give to these people? Like, for me, anytime somebody's easily jealous, manip- jealousy, manipulation, and control are my three big ones on that. I, I want to add to that. I used to think when I was younger that if someone was really jealous, th- it meant like, oh, that's a good thing because that means they, they like you a lot and that yeah. means you're special. In reality, it has nothing to do with you. The person's fucking insecure. Yeah. And but there's balance to that, yeah. right, though? Because at the same time, like, too over-jealous is like, yeah, you're insecure. But not showing, but like, if some dude comes and hits on your girl, or like, at the bar and you don't do anything about it, that then I, it's I'm like, talking about... I know, but also I'm saying, uh, like, balance. Are you like supposed to do something about it? Or can your girl I mean, are you supposed it? to? Are you supposed to just sit there and watch? Should you not what, you sit there and watch? It, it and just trust depends the on the person that you're with. It depends on the situation, I think, because some yeah, some guys. Okay, okay. Like, let me just give an example. You know. okay. When I when I, I was 18, saying, when I was 18, I was in a short film, just like a regular short film. Hold and on, the, short films. No. <laughs> yeah, what kind <laughs> of short? Here. No, yeah. I actually short beat what? someone no, up. I'm just kidding. Post the link in the chat. <laughs> no, I actually no. beat someone up, but it was like a fun short film. And I was dating a guy at the time, and the director messaged me for a copy of it. And he go, and he took my phone. Is like, oh, you're a, g- a guy messaging. Get the fuck away from my girl. And I never got a copy of it because a guy texts my phone. I'm talking about jealousy that's ridiculous, where you can't even live your life. You know what I mean? Yeah. That type of shit. Like a little bit is good. Like I, of course, I want my husband to get a little jealous, but I'm talking about where you. I mean, someone gets in the around you and they spend thirty minutes going through your phone every yeah, fucking day. That's true. You know to, that type to, of shit. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah that's there's definitely toxic. Yeah. Right yeah. To respond to what Stryker said about like, should you not do anything? Like, I totally agree with you. Like, I trust my girl. I know any dude who hits on her, she's gonna reject. But at the same time, I'm not gonna like stand there and watch them do that. No, hey, you, know, you know what I mean? Because what's mine is mine. No, I get it. I mean. Men obviously want to claim they're women, but I mean, from where I'm coming, I mean, being mind. married and stuff, it's just, it's super easy to just sit back and kind of laugh about it. Like, go ahead, give it your best shot. You <laughs> can take her from me. You deserve it. But l- let me say this again. You know your woman. You've been with her for what? How many? 11 years? Yeah. 10 years? But I mean. He knows 
exactly how she's going to act. You, you, we've discussed this. But I mean, even if you don't but know how, even if it's from, like day you know. two, you know, or day mm-hmm. ten, if someone can take her from you, is she yours? Mm. Is she is she the type of woman that you want? That she's easily taken from you. And that's when you should just let her go. Then it's really it's really yeah. a lot of thought these days, you know. I mean, yeah, yeah you want to you want to oh, hey, get off my woman. Yeah. But most of that stuff stems from sex, you know. It's like, hey, I want to hit that. You're not gonna take away that from me. I'm trying to hit that, you know. Right. It's only day two. I'm waiting for day seven where I can hit that. Are you kidding me? You're gonna stop me? Like that's where that comes dude, from. Speaking it's of, it's not a relationship yeah. thing. Fuck, dude. Well, if w- I'm not fucking by the end of week one, dude, I think I'm moving on. That's <laughs> right. But that's a common thing for guys. That's 2023 cause... for you. But yeah. I, I will say, like, it, I I'm not gonna lie. I like a little bit of jealousy. Like I like when a girl gets a little jealous. Well, yeah, you I'm, know, a little yeah. bit because then it's like <sighs> I'm good. It's like she she wants to know, like, hey, that's my man. It just depends on the situation. Like I you think you saying. like that, and uh-huh. until you it, until you're with someone that overdoes it, and then yeah, you're like, "Fuck, I need it. my freedom." Like if when you're like, it's always cool until shit, it's you're not. not doing. Yeah, if they're like like you were saying, they're grabbing your phone. Hey man, what what's this? You know, or uh-huh. then then it's ridiculous. But a right. little bit, I think a tiny bit's of good. You know, someone ex- as as some, a care. random number calls yeah. you and s- their random number, and you get fucking not my relationship now but then you get yelled at and accused for days who was that i know you're lying a fucking random number called me i don't know (laughs) yeah (laughs) i went through one of my uh, exes phones before and it was like i'll never go through someone else someone's phone again (laughs) i've never done that i've never done that about it but you know what because i i I had a feeling she was cheating on me i was right oh you found it yeah but like even then though even like it didn't make me feel any better that I found what I was looking for. And that's the other thing. Like, you, if you suspect your partner's cheating on you, you will I'll always find something. Who called you? Who You'd rather know, you? though, right? Who sent you that fucking friend request on Facebook? If you're looking for something, you're going to find it. Yep, I agree with that. That's what's funny about looking through things because it can go one of two ways and you're both disappointed. If you don't find anything, you're disappointed because you feel like something's there. And then if you do find something, you're disappointed because... They did you wrong. See, I don't know that because I've never not through someone's phone. I would not even. And right now, I'm just saying. I think it's a waste <laughs> of time. It's like either one of those, I don't want to know if you're playing me or I know who I'm dealing with. Either way, you kind of like just open yourself for trouble. Yeah. See, that's why, it's good. that's why it's good to have Stryker here. Well, I don't know. <laughs> that's why it's good to have trust. When you trust yeah. someone, Yeah. I, I just, I don't feel... But like trust a lot is of relationships hard to get nowadays, been. you know. Sure. Especially with people just fucking so early, like we were talking about. Like, and I was, I was, I was plenty guilty of that, you know, of just like having sex too soon in a relationship. I think nowadays, like, well, hold on, like, hold on, hold yeah, on, hold on. I'm wondering. Let about me say that something too. right now. <laughs> You're a dude. Let me think. Tell you how dudes think. Not all, but a lot of them do. At least that's how I think. When I was bad. No, are, you just, the, are you saying the are you saying the slogan? I'm gonna say if hey, you ain't I, I, if, if you, I'm gonna get it now, I'm gonna get it because I might never get it. That was my mentality. You oh, know? I thought you were talking about if you ain't banging. No, no, like that's just how I felt. Like not saying I wouldn't get it, but I was like, if you're offering it now, I'm gonna take it. You know, yeah. when when I was bad, you know, when a lot I of time that's like all they're offering because, too. because you don't know. Like the next day, the girl could flake out or something. It's but like how, how you know, do you, how does that change? her image if you get it on the first night I do, do, I do. You look, do you think less of her me personally i don't i, I don't I, think it's a thing well yeah. so i guess it, I it's guess a it's personality not, i guess yeah. it, it's your mentality because i think yeah that i'm that special even though i know this girl probably did it before but at the time i'm just like you know but when, just think if it when is, they're though. sitting there saying i've never done this before i was never like do lying that. but hey I and then you it. are that one that they do it for then yeah. it does actually matter exactly. yeah See, then that means something but you don't but know. You just don't know. You yeah. don't know. That's the thing. But I, I just always thought like, hey, if, if, if I can get it now, I'm going to get it now. No, I mean, you I know? get it. What's the difference between a guy that's got a, a really good best friend that's a female and a guy that's dating a girl? Sexual contact. That's it. There's no difference. You yeah. may care because, I mean, a guy that's best friends Hold with somebody is going to care about yeah. you on another level. Hold on. There is you know? a difference. Though. They're going to put their life on the line for you possibly. I think there is a big difference when there's a guy and girl best friend because – I honestly think all these girls that have a guy best friend, the guy would fuck if the opportunity presented yep, it. But agree. that's my point, though. I agree. But, like, the, the, the woman, yeah, she probably wouldn't. 
Like, the we always probably would. But the guys, the guy best friends, they would fuck if she dis- if she said, come and get it. I Can think, I, I think 90%, 90%, not all of them, but 90% of guys that are friends with girls, they're orbiters. They're just, <laughs> they're just waiting for us. Oh, damn. Not, it's not going good with their boyfriend? Hey, they're we need to go good. talk about this. Let's go have the bar, have some drinks. <laughs> They're you orders, know, and they're fucking they're an asteroid waiting to hit. Yeah, I'm ninety percent. Not all guys, but I think ninety percent are like that. And don't you you know no, that's true? No, that's what I to say. You know that's me true. And, me and Aaron didn't um weren't intimate until we were together for a week. Which I know that sounds like not a long time, but our passion and our it's a, it's about it was a these long days. time. But here, this is the thing. I mean. I'm really <laughs> happy how that happened because. Then for three days in a row, we were up all night on the phone talking and I was kind of like, oh, you could be my fake boyfriend. And like if we already did that, he we wouldn't have talked so much as like friends, even though we were really attracted to each other. We like got a lot closer for that. So I think it can be good. I actually I agree with Gypsy about that, though. I think if you the woman waits longer or, or the male, I do think you build a stronger bond, you know. I don't think it should even matter, like, when but you it do does. it. I mean, obviously, on the first day, it's it not. Does. it makes you think some kind of way. And if it happens two weeks later or you don't even wait that long, that might be a problem. But when it comes down to it, it's who you met and how they make you feel, right? And the sex is just Man, supposed to be a I bonus. I don't agree. Let me tell you why I think it matters. Because you think differently about that woman if it took longer. Well, if you've already you, I'm going to tell you why. Only you if think, it takes a long no, time, though. but I'm going to tell you why you think differently. Because you're like, okay, this girl's probably not giving it up just easy with someone else. That's what would be my mentality. Wouldn't that be yours? I, I could be wrong. Well, when but you I'm probably just saying, act different. Like, if you meet a girl, like, you can have a strong attraction with them that first night. But if the girl's like, holds back, but you can still feel the attraction, then you kind of feel like, okay, this girl probably just doesn't, doesn't try to stack up her body count. See, I, look how interesting <laughs> that you're, Tad. I'm talking about the connect, the genuine connection you feel with someone. You're ta- so really worried about the body count. Because it shows well, that I'm talking about because like that's I, your main. You concern? can you can have a connection with a girl on the first night or the second night, but I feel like that girl, she's probably not like giving it up as easy. If, I want to hear what she was gonna say about main concern. No, I I will, but let me just finish. From a, I'm talking from a man's point of view. <laughs> like if I feel like any time I go out with a girl, like most of the time it does good you know it's good but when a girl like is like like i feel like it's there but they're not like trying to like you know then it it kind of ma- i'll be honest it makes you respect the girl more because like they didn't give it up that easy and you guys could have been like flirting hardcore and blah 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 but it's definitely not you the know? end all be all it's not but i'm just saying yeah like, like don't you guys can lie all you want <laughs> but if a girl doesn't give it up as easy then you're not thinking she's giving it up as easy with everyone else. I'm just keeping it real. If you guys don't like it, that's fine. But I know how men think. No, I mean, kind of. It just, it really depends on, like I said, her personality. I mean, if she's coming up to you half naked talking about, I ain't going to let you hit it yet. You, 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 you laugh it in your head, right? You're laughing in your head. But yeah, because I'm thinking, yes, you looking are. Looking like a librarian talking about, no, no, I'm just not ready for that. Then you might think that way. So it really depends on the personnel that you're getting and not just the time and length of what they let you hit it. So you're saying the first night, some girl comes, she's, you're like, okay, yeah. Like, what I'm saying is if she looks like a person that deserves respect, you'll show it to her. And if she doesn't, you won't. Why wouldn't you think if you're on a date with a girl? Well, I guess some people, never mind. That doesn't make yeah, sense. Yeah, I was about to say, just because you're attracted to her doesn't necessarily mean you respect her. I'm... Like I said, like I'm you just, said, guys want to hit it. Yeah, that's why that's we're true, here. That's, that's why we true. get out of bed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I might hit it today. Let me get up. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, I'm just thinking, Wait, like, like pussy. from a, from a man's Some point guys. of view, like a lot of men, maybe not all men, but I'm thinking, like, if a girl's, if there's like that attraction there and it's like really good, but she still won't let you, and you can you can tell if a girl really likes you and they want to they want to do that. Okay. To me, that. To me, if they're not like letting me hit it like right away, I'm I'm gonna get more respect from because because then it makes me think okay they don't do this with anyone yeah, else. More either. respect initially, but then over time you'll see how that girl actually acts. So yeah, you know, and I think that's what Strikeway over there is saying is that like 
Yeah, it definitely does. Like, I agree with you. It, it, it does affect, like, the way you look at it at first. But over time, though, that's where the respect and trust is earned. Okay, I see, I see that, but I'm saying, like, with that situation, let's say that girl goes, hangs out with other people. Now, you kn- maybe this, the attraction's not as strong as you thought it was, but you, but you probably thought it was strong. But let's say that per- girl goes, hangs out with other people after you guys hung out. You know, I'm a pretty confident dude, so I'm thinking if this girl didn't give it up to me, you know, I'm just telling it like Doug has no chance. No, no but I'm just saying if she didn't give it up. I got no chance if I can't. No, all all I'm saying is if she didn't give it up to me and she's going out with some other people, then maybe there's some attraction, but I don't think she's just going to give it up as easy. That's all I'm saying, you know. (laughs) That's funny. Maybe she just didn't pick you. Yeah, I don't think like that. You never though. know with See, women. These but days. I don't think like she, maybe she didn't. But I don't you think know, like that. Because if I thought like that, I would never get none. But you women know? are like, picky, dude. People are just picky nowadays yeah. in general. You might not be somebody's type for whatever fucking reason. Like sure. you can do one thing. Funny story. Oh, wait, hold, wait hold, hold, hold on. When me and my girl, when we first started like seeing each other, I mean like first because we were just kind of like fuck buddies at first before we started dating. She literally told me that. uh like, I had, like, dirty fingernails one <laughs> you know what I mean, one day through her. But, like, for her, that was, like, one of her deal breakers, you know? Like, obviously... obviously deal breakers? You know, obviously, it wasn't, you know? That's crazy. Because fucking engaged now, having right. kids, so obviously, yeah. it wasn't. But I'm saying, my point is, like, people are picky about, like, the specific things. For sure. her, dirty fingernails. <laughs> That's something a lot of dudes are going to... Dudes, take care of your fingernails. Like, it means a lot going on a date. <laughs> Do you agree? <laughs> I don't really Being notice a woman, that. Like, do you look at your, like... No, I man, don't notice. Did you, have you noticed Thank your man's God. nails when you <laughs> first no, started? I, no, <laughs> I don't. I, I have never noticed that. Yeah, I forgot what... She good. good. What do you mean good? I had something good to oh, say. Oh, no, not you. <laughs> oh. No, I was, I was just... Let's have gypsy talk. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to talk? Yeah. You're on the podcast for a reason. Come on now. All right. So if you have something to say, if you didn't have. Yeah, oh, I got a lot to say. That's yeah. why I'm really happy that we're having this. So one thing we wanted to have like a good marriage, and we're like, let's listen to YouTube and learn about marriage. Mm. And one of the biggest things it says for men is they want respect. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know we hear that across. And uh, so to me, I grew up where my mom is the boss of the household. My stepmom's the boss of the household. <laughs> Grandma what? single. That's it's common. It's a, That's extremely common. So really? I, so oh, I, I in my natural inclination, I'm just kind of more bossy. But that doesn't make my husband feel like a man. It doesn't make him feel like a husband. And so I, you know, started watching YouTube videos because I care. Like why, if I, if I could make my husband be around me and be like, eh, she's okay, or be like, oh my god, I'm fucking crazy about her. I love her so much. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't I want him to be crazy about me? And all it takes is like women think it's a looks thing, and it, and you do want to look nice and pretty, but you want it's about the inside too. It doesn't matter how pretty you are if you're fucking nagging all the time mm-hmm. and bitching We're about stuff. No one's gonna want what you got on. <laughs> no one's gonna want to be around you if or after, starting little fights all the time. No one's gonna want to be around you, and women sure. only focus on that outside. A- after a while, I don't care how good looking she is if she's nagging and stuff that that makes me look that at a woman biggest. like you're ugly like tear you down got, of the, relationships in, nagging yeah the inside starts coming out like i don't care how good looking you look it's like ugh, you know like it starts making the person look ugly yeah yeah no that's one of the things they talk about in this marriage stuff is about how your home should be his one place of peace you have to deal with the world on the outside where's the amen <laughs> you can know, but you got to deal with the it's crazy so world uncommon, and especially so, being so an good. entrepreneur, <laughs> you know, and so you, you want, you want to come home and have that <coughs> peace and a lot of people come home and then they have the wife nagging at them. You didn't do this. You didn't do that. And you might it's have to teach a workshop or something. I here. know. What's going <laughs> on? A lot of you, women you, you that gotta need some teach <laughs> You got to start, you got to start telling <laughs> women what men really want. Oh, oh my striker, God. Is your, is your house peaceful? I don't Enough. Mean to, hold on, let me say this. Uh, I don't mean to call you out. Like, I don't want you to come on here and, like. Oh, I can me, say I, anything I want. I want. No, no, let me say. say gonna, yeah, like, call him out my ass. You're on the podcast. Yeah. We're going to talk about it. It I'm doesn't matter. To this guy's marriage, but I just oh, no. The there's phone. nothing I, I can wanna, say. No, I his I marriage wanna, is good. I just want to get your perspective and hear, you know, your advice that you can give to people out there for somebody who, who is married and has two kids, right? 
three. Three now, yeah. Been Twins doing and it. one, yeah. And he's been doing it for ten years now. Like, yeah. Is everything she's saying like? Is Absolutely, it just doesn't happen that? in the average marriage. I mean, Deal in my marriage, I've got something. Uh, there you go. Really unique, where she's the first woman I've ever dated to be better over time. Mm-hmm. Usually, the women you date, they peak when you're together. You know, that honeymoon phase is it. After yeah. you get through that, it's over, and things just head downhill. Next thing you know, you're not hugging, you're not holding hands, you're not kissing, you're not touching her at all. You're just you're wishing not you could. Plans to go on dates, and that's what I was talking about. Right. Like when you're chasing that girl, like you're you're constantly thinking of stuff to do. Well, let's, you know, to get to bring that person out. Can I ask? Let's let's ask for the audience. So, what do you think made like your relationship get to this level where like she's become a better woman? That was just her, to be honest. Uh, it's just really rare to have somebody what? care about the things that you don't like, you know, so, like she's saying it wasn't definitely not to that level for sure. Like the thing she's saying, I'm like, damn, that must be nice. But it's definitely like about half that where, you know, if we argue about something, she's not going to prolong it. She's not going to try to, you know, cut off my balls where she's going to say something <laughs> to hurt me, you know? And to be honest, if we fight, I could look at my phone and be like, Oh my God, that was funny as hell. Did you see this? And we will stop fighting and laugh about some shit. So the best thing to do is really just keep the conflict down and the positivity up. Because every fight is a potential to break up in my book. And when you got kids, that that is ruining somebody's life. Because every every kid that's messed up in their life Mm -hmm. has been messed up as a child, not as an adult. I knew Striker was going to drop a one-liner eventually. Every fight is a potential to break up. I want to – can I, I say something to it that? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Can I say something to that, though, in all honesty? There's two things I learned from Tony Robbins, who I – these are my two, like, favorite things that I've ever learned about marriage. The first one is no matter how bad – and we made this decision um, before we got married, and we got married after a month of knowing each other – no matter how bad you are mad at someone, don't ever, 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 ever fucking say the D word. You can say, I don't like you. I'm mad at you. Even call someone a bitch. I've actually heard don't that before, unfortunately. Don't ever uh, fucking say that. Divorce. You know divorce. Because yeah. when you no, say. Honest, I was thinking like dyke or dick. Or when you that. say divorce or when you say, I don't want to be with you or we're not together anymore, that plants it and takes it to the next level. And we yeah. have this. Un- you can be as mad at me as you want or I can be mad at you, but we don't ever fucking say that because when we decided to get married we said you know there could be parts about you I learned parts about me that you learned but no matter what we're gonna figure this out and we're gonna get it and when you have that unwritten rule it makes things that much better because you can get in fights and it can be hard but you know that they're not gonna give up on you you know what I mean Mm -hmm. so that was the first thing that he said and Aaron's not perfect, you know what I mean? A few a few times, he, well, we shouldn't be, and I called him out, and I, even though I was fucking pissed, too, I was like, you don't fucking say that, you know? Because I'm, I'm used to, in other relationships, if I'm mad at you, I find we're not together, bye, and don't talk for yeah. two weeks. Because that was my way of punishing you if you did, didn't do something that I liked, mm-hmm. where you can't fucking do that in relationships. Well, that's what happens. Oh, and it's dang. easier to do that, right? So that's you, more it, common. Yeah. It's easier to be like, fuck you, bye. Cause, right. It is. It's easier to just break up with this person instead of actually trying to resolve your issues and admitting when you're being toxic, what are things that you're doing wrong that like isn't healthy for the relationship and how can you start changing so you guys can be happy. Yeah, and, and how do I how do I feel safe and have really right. have amazing sex with you and feel safe with you if every time you're mad at me you say you're gonna leave me? How do yeah. how do I have you as my feel Girls safe with you? Fuck you if Gypsy, you're mad at you. Gypsy, don't make me say what you told me on the phone. About the ego. You may be right, but about the love versus ego? Yeah, you, you can't may, have both. You, like you get in a fight and you may be right, but you're. Oh, okay. So this is another what I, I told Tad too, but then remind me of what the, the Tony Robbins because it's really good. Okay. Um, basically, people get mad over the littlest things. I'm guilty of it. I'm probably one of, I used to be one of the most petty people ever. And they get mad and they like say two people are like, they go to their separate houses and they're supposed to have a date, but they get mad and go there. Because I was right. You're sitting in your bed by your fucking self. <laughs> Cold. You're not getting your. You're not. You know. Alone getting with my nasty. Principles. <laughs> you're not. You're laying your bed your by yourself, right. sitting there, but you're fucking right. That's always a place. Yeah, you're s- sitting there, right, cuddling your pillow. Yeah. Is, is it worth it? Because we're only on right. Earth for so long. Is it worth it to fucking be that mad over something? And it, honestly, most fights are over really stupid shit. 
and think, to get mad about that. And okay, yeah. you're by yourself now. I think guys do it? that all the time, though. Like almost every time a woman gets mad and you're dating her, you're going to bow down just because you don't want to go that night going, oh, well, I was going to do something with her, but now I'm going home. Yeah. Play with myself. <laughs> I think that's just really common, but it should be more common to like just talk about it and make sure that you guys, like she was saying, you know where you stand and you're not saying things to hurt each other that's going to affect you in the future because yeah. you never know that. Well, let oh. me a- ask you this, Stryker. So like, let's say you and your wife get into a fight. Like, how, how do you handle it? Do you like kind of go off on your own for a little bit and calm down? Or do no. you guys try to handle it right there, like talk it out or... No, basically just like everybody else. It's just as soon as we're done, we just don't care what just happened. Mm -hmm. Like we completely forget about it like it never existed unless it was something serious. Because if you feel wronged, we actually sit down and we talk about it like we're talking now. But if it's something petty, like you didn't wash the dishes, it always turns into, (laughs) why did you, you know? But if you're constantly not doing dishes, though, and you ask her, hey, babe, I would like you to do the dishes or like whatever it is to help out a little bit more. If it's constantly them asking you and you're still not doing it, that's one like a little thing like, why didn't you do the dishes? Fucking explodes into like this this For whole sure. big other thing, you know? Because like those little things like they just they build up over time, right? You and, and that's why and that's why it's really important to take care of those little little things like doing the dishes because they're not they're not little. In like, in they my add, opinion, they stack up on each other, you know. The, there's certain things though that you can do in a relationship where you realize like my my thing with Aaron is that anytime I'd have a fucking drink in the car he'd accidentally ash his blunt into it and I'd have like a coffee <laughs> accidentally or like thank you <laughs> and it got to the point like shit, just- <laughs> thank you baby for bringing that drink <laughs> no, I would perfect. get like a six dollar Starbucks and then I have two sips and there's fucking ashes in it oh that's even better <laughs> No, okay, Ooh, here. I'd be pissed too, to be honest. You no, be <laughs> but guess, guess what? Guess what? If it is a if it is a guarantee that if I have my drink, my husband will ash in it. Guess what? And I know that I'm the fucking problem that I keep leaving my drink for him to ash into it. <laughs> so I started putting my drink on the side where you can't ash, well, and problem live. solved. Fix the fucking problem. If they're not gonna change, I'm not gonna be a nag anymore. I'm just not gonna have my fucking drink there. And guess what? No more ashes in my drink. Listen to Gypsy yeah. taking account. I think that would be that one moment I'd be like. Go ahead, you can tell me, bitch. If you ash in my drink one more time, I'm gonna slap the shit out of you. <laughs> That'd be the one moment I'm like, all right, all right. I just, you know, that's where I go though. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, that's fucking funny. I mean, I think that <laughs> it's <laughs> true. <laughs> it's so true. Well, so what? Are, what are some things that we can do to recognize our own toxic behavior? How can we do some, you know, some self reflection and figure out some self awareness and personal growth? And being big enough where we can ad- admit our own mistakes and take responsibility for our own actions. Try not to be selfish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Really yeah. try not to be selfish. That's hard nowadays. Like, ex- in 2023, like, we are, like, as a society. About yourself. The, the selfishest we've yeah. ever fucking been. As a hu- it, fuck society. As a human race, dude. We Seriously. We are the most selfish out of it. I really hope, like. We go down eventually, but I don't know. <laughs> what do you mean? Like the whole human race goes down? Think, no, 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 oh, the selfishness yeah, level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, well, the most I common hope. pictures are selfies. Yeah. What's that? I said uh, the most common pictures people take are selfies. Like think of how yeah. that's selfish. It's all about yourself. I think social media has a lot to do with selfishness. Like, yeah. I don't know, man. Them women are taking pictures and making hundreds of thousands just taking bikini pictures. I say more power to them, you know? Like, yeah, for that's sure. not being selfish. That's but just trying to make a, some money off what you got, sure. you know? It's a bunch of horny dudes, though, that are doing that. You know what's yeah. something that's that true. I recently did that I think is way better for my mental health? Man? I stopped watching porn. And if you're, if you're on social media and all you do is take pictures of your ass, I, I don't follow you. I'm not friends with you anymore. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. I don't. If that's all you do it for, I'm sorry. I'm not. I don't How do you know they don't do that to get shit. popular? And then they got a crazy message they want to get across, like "love yourselves." They don't. Yeah, they lo- don't. Lo- lo- <laughs> love your ass. They don't. <laughs> they Can they, I they say don't. The second thing. Women that are doing yeah. that are trying. No, to- this like so at the beginning of the year, I tried doing <laughs> this. <laughs> no, listen, I tried. So I was doing this diet. It's called the carnivore diet. I don't know if you ever heard of yes. it. So you only eat meat. Yep. Like literally, that's it. Long story short, I lasted eight days doing it because it, my dick didn't work anymore. I couldn't get it up. It killed my sex drive. 
Mm-hmm. Podcast and conversation for a different day, but that's why I stopped the carnivore diet. But I also like it was it was also a cleanse. Like I wasn't smoking any weed. I gave up porn. It was like you know I'm gonna do this really strict diet and then completely cleanse myself for anything. Yeah, you probably shocked your body into limpness. <laughs> yeah, that's literally what it was. Like after really not up a lot, cause I was still like working out every day. I was just having such a negative like caloric intake. Like my body just didn't have the energy to like get it up anymore. But I was I was like I am not doing any diet that makes my dick knock work. Do you, at the same time. Do you realize like most of those negative caloric diets do that? Yeah. The, that's one thing they don't talk about, but no, for sure. But that's what happens. So that's what I stopped doing. But anyway, I continued when, once I got back, I was like, don't just continue with the no porn thing, dude. And then like just the way I don't know, there's something like when you're constantly watching porn, and it's not, you don't have to constantly watch porn, like, yeah, you don't have to constantly watch porn, but even if you're, like, constantly going on, like, Facebook, and you're seeing, like, women, like, shaking their ass, or, like, they're half naked, or, like, doing gym squats, or whatever, like, you're so used to seeing that, it's like, when you see just, like, an attractive woman down, like, walking down the hall, you, like, automatically go to her ass, and start, like, looking at some of, like, physical features, you know, because that's how, because that's what you're... Isn't that men in general, though? I mean... Yeah, but like what do but, you but, see? But my say, but but my point is, I feel like social media, like there's so much of that stuff on the internet that it it changes the way you view women. Yeah, I suppose. I suppose. Yeah, no, like, I suppose so. Yeah. You get saturated. When they're just constantly getting sexualized, and them and them constantly sexualizing themselves. So, <laughs> what do women see when they see us? Because you know, a guy, the first thing they see is ass and titties or a pretty face but like what what do you see when you look at a guy for the first time i don't i mean the night that i met my husband i was on a shrooms trip and it was like he was glowing and like but other than that i don't i don't ever look at guys i just don't care but i don't i i just don't so you're and and that's even before i met my husband even before i met my husband i just never you know what I mean? Yeah. Look, I'm, I'm, I'm saying, I'm I just—I like, never yeah. really see people that you know. I'm not saying like you don't okay. see attractive people anymore. But, but I wait, don't. What is she? What are you saying? So I'm you're saying, saying like you don't care don't, what they look like? Well, I don't. I don't look. I don't go into a room and be like, oh, where's that? Where's that attractive guy? I just don't care. Like I don't. I'm. I don't ever like yeah. really think about guys. No, like I'm saying like if Even you see somebody that goes by and you're like, man, that guy's attractive. Like, what's the first thing that goes to your head? Like, do you even care if they look that great? Are you going, oh, I wish he, hope he's got a good personality. I hope he's got a good job. Like, because I know the only thing in guys' mind is like, man, she looks good. I want to touch. But like, yeah. what do women but, think okay, when they see it? And, and that's my point. Like, that's what I want to know. Me getting, like, stop watching porn and, like, stop, like, un- un- unfriending anyone who all they do is, like, take pictures of their ass. Like, it takes that feeling away because it's not constantly getting thrown in my face. And I think it's a fucking good way. But like it takes it away for the better, dude. Cause then I'm able to focus on other shit. I'm not constantly like having the little dopamine, you know, get released in my brain because I saw a nice butt or whatever. It's like I don't even fucking care. It honestly probably helps you with your relationship too. Yeah. You could probably care less, but you're still gonna be like, man, that girl's pretty. Yeah. Without I'm even not trying you don't though. See, you, it's like obviously. It's not like I'm gonna go. People still exist. Let me yes. rate this girl. Like, you automatically, like, I'm attracted to her. I'm not attracted to her. I like that about her. Like, you don't even get a chance to think about it. Like, it's just, that's the way it is. Mm-hmm. But that's just males in general. Right. That's why I'm asking her, like, what, what, what's her process? Because every guy's process is, ooh, pretty, let me touch, you know? Like, <laughs> what's yeah. a woman's process? Because I've never met a guy that can continuously say no to sex like women can. That's for sure. Like, especially if they're really attracted to their. Well, some like, could you no. get mad at your partner and be like, "I'm not gonna have sex with you"? Like, that would seem like more of like punishment no. for myself yeah. than anything, right? But like, it's 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 common for women to do that. So it's like, obviously, they don't care about sex or physical attraction. Maybe more as, as much as we do. Maybe well, so. Because well, for them, it's a lot more emotional. I think so. If they're upset, first with of all, you, hold up. Upset with you, it ain't wet down there. But guys, like, we could be pissed as fuck at you and still get a major. Right. You know, because we don't have that, like, sex isn't as emotional for us. We don't have, it's, it's more physical. I think for guys, sex is more physical and for women, it's more emotional. What do you think, Gypsy? Is that true? Absolutely. I, I agree if, with that, So it's different. If you fight about something, like, stupid, you know, 
it, then you're going to want to, you know, have makeup sex. But say someone like really betrays your trust or says something very hurtful to you, you you don't want that person to touch you. If 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 you if someone really hurts you deeply, but if you're if you're a deep person, there's people that aren't deep people that could care less. No, I see what you're saying, but a girl could say something messed up to me, and then she starts, you know, taking her clothes off. I don't care anymore. You know, <laughs> you know pl- 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 playing the skin really flute or something like that might. You know, but if it's me someone that you're that, really right. close with that hurt you, hurt hurt you, or that you like broke trust with you, you. Where it's like, why do I want to feel close to you? It would be have don't? to be something ridiculous, like earth shattering like you just ruined my life and even then i might bang you just because i'm pissed at you like Like, Like still like it takes a lot for a guy to say no like for you something shattered would be like your wife cheating on you okay even even if you found out she cheated on you she's like well i'm gonna suck your dick right now i still might hit it one last time and call it a day like and i fucking hate you (laughs) you know some guys are different because i'll 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 bring up a situation right now like my baby mama is always trying to like get with me like (laughs) And I'm like, I'm not touching your ass ever again. Like, don't even try. Like, she tried. Well, you did it once. Not in a long time. No. Like, it's, she'll try. Trust me. She tries. She even tried, like, offering threesome and stuff. It's like, no. Like, I don't want nothing to do with you, you know? Because I always think, I think differently. I think, oh, she got to get pregnant or something. You know, something weird, you know? Like, and what happens when she gets pregnant? Well, yeah. that's why I don't do nothing with her. Why? Because I, I don't. I don't want no toxic. She's like the most toxic woman. One you just said she was your baby's mom already, already, so she always has one of your kids. What's yeah. the difference between one or two? More child support. <laughs> yeah, more child yeah. support. Yeah. That's why I say I'm She would with, try to move in with me. Your nuts are in her you know, hands. Like, got me locked down. Kids is like part yeah. one, and you're married and kids. Like You might as well just call her master. Can I ask you something? <laughs> did, you, did you plan to have kids? Like, were you like, I want to have kids with you? And then yeah. You plan. So what yeah, we had plan? sex for years and never strapped up and never had even one baby scare okay. until we literally got on an app and was like, this is the way it is. Hmm. Yeah. You're like, okay, this is the day I got to bust a nut all up in you. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real. It was, on a, it was on a schedule, best schedule I ever had, I'll tell you that. <laughs> You're like, dang, oh, it's time. You right? You know what time it is? Come on. <laughs> yeah. No, it's just nice yeah. when you don't have to, like, do any of that stuff that men are traditionally trying to do like mm-hmm. you should be able to just appreciate what you have you know whether you have a bad bitch or someone that you're just barely attracted to you know when you see her enter a room you're just like man that's mine you know and that's how it should be that's how a man wants to feel you know mm-hmm. they feel like they've yep. got something worth having and if you can be that woman to be like you know you got something you don't have to worry about it because you know that i'm something worth having right. It's just over, you know, like there's there's no more fighting. There's there's no more problems. It's nothing but good times. And that's what your marriage is like. Shit. What do you got to worry about? You can the rest is easy. I mean, you like you said, be an entrepreneur, take over the world because you don't have no family problems. But that's the th- like you said, that's the thing. Like a man really wants to know like his woman is his, you know, like that's the greatest feeling in the world. Oh, yeah. you know, especially bec- I'm going to explain why. Because women get. A lot of t- women can go out any day and get laid. They always get at attention. At any time, at any second. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they always get attention. It doesn't matter what they look like. Yeah. They, we they can about get it. On the last podcast. I know. That's why but I, I'm just saying, yeah, like, that's why it a feels guy's good. body count is impressive and a woman's isn't. Right. Because mm-hmm. a guy, it's a lot more difficult for a guy to get a high body count than it is a woman. Like, or even mm-hmm. talk to females for that long. Because, I mean, certain guys can never talk to a woman. Like, you can literally go out for years every day in public places, and a woman will never talk to you. Even if you try to approach her, certain guys will just be like, try to go up to a girl, and they won't want to talk to them because of the way they look yeah. or the way they are perceived. So, I mean, it does take a lot of effort yeah. for even attractive men to get women. I, th- I, I, I feel like women don't understand, like, how hard it is to yeah. be a man, like, to go. I, I just don't think they care. It's not about they don't. I'm sure they understand. They just don't care. They can't understand. That's your problem. Because I've never dealt with that, you know? Like, I don't think. A lot of women deal with that. I've got, not, sh- my wife's got a friend that is really pretty, really, really pretty girl, but no one will ever talk to her. We go out to the bars. No one ever comes up to her. I'll no one hi. ever buys I'll say drinks. Hi to her. And it trips me out. And she always asks me. Why aren't people coming up to me? Am I ugly? And I go, you know what it is? She's too good looking. 
No, this it's it's kind of yeah. sad actually. You're you're hot enough where you're really attractive, but you're not hot enough where a guy will break out of his shell to come talk to you. Mm. You'll get I all those guys that. will look at you and be like, "Man, she looks really good." But you can't get that guy to come over and be like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna try it." That girl's bad, you know. Yeah, but things are things are different now. Like, I'm a little older, so I know like before all these dating apps, I had to have game. I had to go up to chicks, you know. I'm well, like, hey, I mean, you, you, you know what I'm saying? Apps is a different type of game, though, too. It is, so. but I'm just saying I don't think as many men are approaching women. As no, they really aren't. They'd younger, rather just swipe you know? left or right and hope they match. It's yeah, e- it's it's e- it's easier that way for them. Less I rejection, th- though. No, because I think for like for me, what it was when I was on there, because I used to be a pretty shy guy, you know. What it is is like if you match with a hot chick on there, you automatically know. Okay, so she thinks I'm attractive. So it kind of breaks down that barrier. Like for me, my biggest insecurity when I was at the bar and I saw someone who was who I thought was really good looking, that. I would be worried that she didn't think I was attractive as well. I was like, she's out, the, the, she's out of my league, basically, you know? That's a good point. So, like, if you match with someone on Tinder, you know, it's like, okay, we all she knows about me, she looked at my pictures, and she said, yep. Like, so, so it helps people feel more confident with, like, their physical appearance, knowing that, okay, this person thinks I'm attractive. That's got that wall down, now I can go see like w- if I can actually make something out of this. But I feel like mo- guys these days probably don't have game like guys, because I'm older. Like, So you're saying but, but guys my age don't have game like guys your age? Or, How God, old are you? I'm 47. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, probably well, not because you. they you don't look 47. The I know no one thinks that. Black don't crack, baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. My, Dude, no, but my I, grandpa's but in his 80s. He looks like he's 50. Right? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm saying this. Like when I was younger, Dude, I had to go up to chicks, but I I conditioned my mind to have this mentality like, and this is cocky, but this is a m- mentality oh, I had. How could they say no to this? <laughs> no, no, I was just like, I, my mentality is like, that's your loss, you know? And it yeah. just became a numbers game. Like, when I was oh, young, God. it was just a numbers game. It's sure. like, okay, Eventually whatever. someone's going to like you. You know, like, whatever, you know? <laughs> but I don't think guys think like that nowadays because I don't think they approach women as much. They're you know? just scared. Yeah, they're scared. I but, think that's what but, it really but is. But back then, man, you had to like. It used to be you fun. To, you had to talk to girls. You had to get their number. You know, yeah. like you had, you had to be I, charming. Yeah. Even for me, I remember growing up, I had to call. Like you had to call their house phone. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and talk to their dad. Them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hang up. <laughs> you was watching. You was I didn't watching. know you went through that, but yeah. I, I wish it was like that, having daughters. It's, it's, <laughs> It's not like that anymore because kids Ugh. get a cell phone at a really young age now, and then they and then they just hand their like phone number out to boys at school and shit. Oh, that's so scary! Or Snapchat don't, or Instagram don't or something. I'm sorry. So that's how it is. Oh, that's all. Oh. Do your kids? How old are your kids? And if and then do they have cell phones? No, uh, I've got my twins are five and my okay. So yeah, they're, I've got they're a one year old. <laughs> yeah, they're way too young. For yeah. That. But what do you think? Like, the game's they're changed. gorgeous though. That's what really sucks. Yeah, I see. I think I got. A cell phone when I was in high school, but I've seen some really young kids with phones nowadays, and I think a lot like another part of it is a security thing. Like you, you can have like a tracker in your shit, and like there's a bunch of a lot of fucking weirdos out there nowadays. So I do think a part of it of like a parents giving their really young kids a phone is just because they have their fucking location on them, you know, just like in case anything would ever happen, you know, like they have that there. Man, I remember when I was younger, we'd go to the mall, yeah. pick up girls. Oh, my God. I'd you come back when yeah, the lights came on. I, I was like 16 those. years old, man. I'm, you know, trying to spit game at a Taco Bell. Still? Little thing. Not too many malls left, no, man. No, there's the mall <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah. But, I mean, like, that's how I'm saying. Like, things are different so you now. you not want to meet any girls at the mall. For me. I was a little kid, okay? Let me tell you something. Wow. I was a little kid. I go, I go roller skating. Yeah. Go roller skating on the spend the night. Yeah, I don't even know they do that anymore. Left too. There's like one or two left of them. Yeah, I mean, go roller skating on the night, spend the night stuff. What was it called? Snowball? Would like man, the I, girl would like choose the dude and like hold your hand. You'd skate around the rink. I, think I don't even cool. remember yeah. that. <laughs> I mean, this, long time this is ago. bad, but I'd even go to the church things. The church? You went to the yeah, church? Yeah, the church yeah. to sleep get out together there. to get a girlfriend? <laughs> well, you know, I just, I'd practice my game there too, you know? Like, the when you're younger, it was at church camp. Yours was? Yeah. See? Man, I don't know <laughs> what they're preaching these days. Wow. <laughs> or back then, at least. Back then. Can I say the Tony Robbins thing? Yeah. 
Okay. So the second thing that Tony Robbins said that's really, really important is they said, if you love your partner and you realize that they have their your best intention and they don't ever want to hurt you and they care about how you feel, don't get offended by things because there's a 99% chance when they say something that they did they, they didn't try to hurt your feelings on purpose or they didn't do anything to hurt you. So many people get offended over little tiny things and be like, oh, well, you said that, well, that hurt my feelings. But if you know at, their co- at the core of who they are that they love and care about you, they're not doing it on purpose and just let it fucking go because who cares? Indeed. That's what why I say Stryker. try not to fight. Yeah. I don't really fight that often. It's super rare. Like, I me personally, I'm so laid back. I really just don't care. Like I just, I got better things to do than try but to fight feel over like stupid you not shit. Caring enough could start a fight. Yeah. Not, not it hasn't. But I mean, I care about things that you're supposed to care about. You know, like, mm. and if she wants to fight over, like I said, who who didn't do the dishes, I'm like, I'm sorry, but you know, when it's basically give and take, and a lot of times with my wife, she will flat out just say no. And I just have to accept the no, whether I want it or not. So a lot of times, I will give that back to her in exchange. Like, I don't know. At one time, I was uh, working 57 hours a week. You know, I was making $26 an hour, and I'm paying all the bills. And she was making, like, I don't know, 16 bucks at the time or something like that, something really small. But she really enjoyed, like, what she's doing. And I was like, you know. It would really be nice if you, you know, made a little bit more money to help us be able to go on vacations and do better, funner things in life instead of me always just footing the bill. And she basically flat out told me no. She didn't want to do it. And then, you know, five years later when stuff was still around the same thing, I'm still working the same amount of hours, I'm still making the same amount of money, still taking care of the bills, I asked her again, you know, would you be willing to, you know, just, you know, try to just, you know, it's the easiest time in history. It's COVID. Every, no one wants to work. Yeah. Think you could go get a $20 an hour job, you know, just help, help me out. And I was literally told again, flat out, no, I will not do it. Like, I, I even talked to her mother. And I said, do you think you could possibly maybe unring this bell? Damn. Maybe you could help me explain things to her? Guess what her mother said? No. Oh, I don't think she would want to do that. No. But did she love her job that much? So like she was really passionate no, about it. No, it's it's not about that. It's simply it's she just didn't feel like. To leave. Yeah, she didn't feel like going through the whole process. Yeah. And I can understand that. I didn't. I I really did not like that. But I can understand that. But at the same token, like she'll be like, "Hey, can you do these dishes? Can you wipe this floor? And can you do this by the time I get home?" And I'm like, "Oh, I didn't know my mom was here." I didn't know that we're giving each other lists of chores to do. Yeah. So probably not. But and then I end up doing the shit anyways because I'm trying to avoid conflict. Avoid conflict. But yeah. at the same token, I'm not getting what I asked for multiple times. But I'm constantly giving her what she wants to avoid conflict. So my day's not going to shit. So it's 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 so much give and take. Like there's a lot of times where I can give her that no as well. Okay. And that's, that's what I was, I was wanting. There's it sounds not like, like you're, no you're time t- where I can't. a lot of take. No, know? I, there is actually, there's a, there's a lot more give in my book that I am, but I'm sure on the same token, she thinks she's giving more. Like when you think about it, she does a lot more in she the house than I will ever do. Kids. She, yeah, she almost takes care of the kids predominantly by herself. Almost like she okay. does almost all the things like, I just do everything that's hard to but do. But at least you recognize that, though. Yeah. You appreciate Oh, yeah. Because not, not a lot of guys do. Like, well, yeah. Like, I'm more than happy, like, being the provider. And you can stay, uh, as long as you're, like, being productive while you're at home and taking care of the kids, I'm cool with that. Right. You know? And that's, that's the biggest thing, well, you know, time, give like, and take. If, if you are out there fucking working 60 hours a week and you come home, the house is a fucking mess, dinner ain't cooked, all this shit. It's like, what, are you, what have you been doing? No, like, it is like that a lot. It, it really it is. is a lot. Oh, yeah. How does that make you No, feel? she's not a house mom. Like, that's the thing, though. Like, but is she still working? Yeah, she's still working. Okay, she, so. She's a really good mom. Like, literally, if she could do kid stuff 24-7, that's what she would do. Like, she would literally, if we could afford to, she would take to the kids something every day, all day, like nonstop. Like, we go to the zoo, then we go to Sky Zone, then, then we yeah. go to the park, you know, then we take a walk around the block or something. And that's all well and good, but, like, in a relationship, it's got to be a balance between you and your wife and you and your kids, you know? And if you don't have that balance, 
shit just goes wrong. <sighs> Can I say something to add to that? Mm -hmm. And this probably isn't what you know people like to hear, but you know, there's a certain piece in the relationship where you know if you want someone to do things a certain way or whatnot, and it's just better, in my opinion, to just let it go and uh, be happy than to be constantly upset. Like if you wanted her to switch the job and you told her multiple times and she didn't, just you, you just let it go. She doesn't want to and it move because and then focus your mind on what she does do for you and what you do like about it because your mind is really what you focus on. And you could wake up every day really happy and think, wow, I have a great mother to my kids. She loves me so much. I have a partner that's faithful. She's had my back no matter what. For people that say marriage is boring, I just want to say that that I didn't. I know you didn't say that, but I just wanted to say it this. Kind of. <laughs> there is nothing sexier than someone that dedicated their fucking life to you. Mm. Like mm. if you if you're if you're like Dang. oh shit, think about it. Yeah. That if is some sexy. That. Like mm -hmm. you dedicated your fucking life to me. Like that's pa that's sexy as oh, fuck. A lot of times you don't get that though, because I mean men are not loved unconditionally. I mean, what do they say? Women, children, dogs. That's it. Men are only appreciated unless they're providing a service. That's just plain and simple. Like, the second But I think shit, that's our role as a man, though. Well, yeah. Why yeah. is it our role as a man, though? It's just come through history that we, that's yeah. how we hold it down. Exactly. But the point is, like, the whole, the whole money thing, too. Like, you're right. I actually did just kind of give it up. But the problem that I have with it is that when shit hits the fan and we really are in a money crunch, she will go nuts. She will be like, mm -hmm. oh, my God, I am so stressed out. Like, we don't have this and we don't have this and they're asking us for this and this. And I'm like, all I can say is, what right do you have to complain about a problem that you're not actively trying to fix? Mm -hmm. If you don't care to fix this problem or preemptively fix this problem, then let Big Daddy handle it because that's what you're used to, right? That's yeah. what you opted to do in the first yeah. place. You told me no. You wanted me to be the breadwinner, so why don't you let me be that? That's all, that's all I'm asking, really. Yeah. I don't want to have to deal with somebody flying off the handle because we couldn't pay our bills this week, and I'm like, well, I only make this much, and I only work this many hours, so I can only, unless I start dealing drugs, there's really nothing else I can do. And I don't want you to sell your ass. You can start an OnlyFans, though. Just show your feet or something. Yeah. <laughs> Have you heard of the crazy cycle? Crazy cycle? No. So, I feel like I've been listening. That sounds good, though. I uh, can't do the crazy cycle. Well, no, this isn't. Uh, look at the smile on your face, Doug. That's a crack up. No, yeah. this isn't crazy cycle like, like dealing with psycho, but it's called because it just makes you go crazy where it says that um, a man, when a woman starts becoming a nag or like, you didn't do this, you didn't do that, he pulls away, right? And when he pulls away, it makes the woman nag more because she's not getting love and affection that she needs. And then the more she nags, the more he pulls away. And it's just this mm. fucking cycle where before you know it, you can't, you can't handle the person. That's why with me, with certain things, with my husband, I love him and he's there for me so much. But yeah, you know, like about the ash in my drink or whatnot, I just let that shit go because who gives a fuck? I'm not going to be this nag that you see and you can't stand me because I'm mad that you ashed in my drink. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, you got to put that shit away and you can have a really happy relationship, but it takes fucking work. You know, it takes work to be like, I'm not going to be mad at this. I'm not going to be mad at this. Just because you, you know, like one of his big things when we first met is, you know, he'd be like, you started it. And I'd be like, that's something, you know, like you're 30 something years old. It does. Do you really want to say that? That doesn't it's sound. It's immature. Right. <laughs> I, I, in the I nicest way possible, I'm trying to. Things are immature. Like. Right, but and, and, uh, you know, so, but for me to be the example, if he gives it, me an attitude or something, I still remain cool. Why? Because I'm not going, and th the way to end that you started it is by me not giving in, and even if you started or whatever, I'm going to be the bigger person, and it is so fucking hard, but it is so worth it. <laughs> it's yeah. so worth it. It really is. It's and nice so to hear like, women say that. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you just don't see them doing it too often. Sometimes it just takes one one, one person in the relationship to be the bigger person and the other person like they see that yeah absolutely you know I mean? like, they a, have to see it though someone has to initiate it though like neither of you may want not want to be the bigger person but someone has to take that first step and be like you know what I'm going to be the bigger person right now and I'm going to let this shit go or I'm, whatever it is and then hopefully that other person they recognize it and then they're just like holy shit and then from there you guys can both like 
it always becomes a competition of, of who's being the bigger person, which is what you want. Right. Exactly. Right. No, this is a, another thing, too. W- when you think about, like, fighting, I remember one time we were in a fight, and it, he said to me, um, oh, well, you, you think you'd win this? He's like, I'm, I'm, I would win this. I can hurt your feelings more than you can hurt mine. Damn. And I said, oh. Damn. <laughs> good Lord. Oh, yeah. And I said to him, I said, how is that winning by yeah. hurting someone that you love's feeling? No, legitimately, think about that. How, what are you getting out of that? How are you winning by the, I'm the one person that was always there for you and that you love by hurting me? And it's true. Because when the ego comes out, even that someone you love, you see them as like, and like, oh, I'm going to win by hurting your feelings. That's not, that's not fucking winning. Mm-hmm. Or when someone's mad, like if, you know, and we don't fight a lot. And like I said, if, it is, if we do fight, it's never infidelity type shit or things like that. It's like battle of the egos. And it's not a lot, but because we're both working on it. But say I say something that he didn't like or he said something I didn't like, right? And you say, I'm sorry. And the person continues wanting to be mad. I, you know, I told him, I said, what do you get out of that? Is this helping your business? Is this helping, you know, I said, I'm sorry. Why, why do you want to hold on to anger and still be mad at me after I said, I'm sorry? And think of how many times, you know, like, think about mm-hmm. that feeling. Probably you, Tad, not to call you out, but, like, if you're mad at someone and you just want to continue being fucking mad, what, what positive does that do for your life? The well, ego. asking me, it doesn't do anything. You know, you should focus your energy somewhere else. So It definitely doesn't help, but a lot of times when I find myself mad, because I'm a super laid-back guy and I almost never get mad, That's I always nice. feel like when I am mad, I don't have a choice, and it kind of makes me mad that I am mad. Yeah. Because when I'm feeling some type of way, I really, I don't get to choose that I'm upset about what's going on. A lot of the time, at least for me. You know, you can definitely pick and choose your battles, and sometimes you're like, I don't really care about that stuff. But usually when I'm mad, it's like, damn, I wish I wasn't so mad about this, but I really don't have a choice. Like, Mm -hmm. it's the way I feel. What if your wife, when you're mad, and say you're mad at your wife about something, if she comes up 10 minutes after you're mad and says, you're right, I'm sorry. No, then I just forget about it. So, and I usually so forget about it whether she says that or not, to be honest. Because okay. yeah. I don't want to be. And then you usually, it's I, not helpful yeah. to be mad at your significant other. It I helps like you, you at not. I apologize too right after. That's no, thing. I usually don't. <laughs> well, no, there's why yeah. apologies are cool, but at the end, Do why waste your time thing? when you can just not care about or just take away what the big thing was? You know, like mm-hmm. let's not hurt each other. Cool. All right. You know, like. You shouldn't have to do something formal necessarily, but that does show like you really care about what somebody was feeling at the time, you know? Mm -hmm. I think apologies are good because it's showing a sense of being humbled, which is the hardest thing to do when you're upset with someone or you think that you've been wronged and they should come to you first. I agree. I don't know why you're looking at me, but I agree. (laughs) <laughs> you're being quiet over there, T-A-D. Because I'm letting, <laughs> letting everybody else yeah. speak. It's, okay. it's interesting. Well, how about this? We're, we're now in 20 minutes in here. So how about we can do, I got, I mean, we barely touched the outline. That we, uh, so we can go, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes longer here. We'll go one more. Is everyone cool with that? Is everyone got to go? I just want to make sure. Sure. She's already it. texted me, but it's okay. She can and wait. She, okay, we'll make it quick. Let's just do, how about 7.52 and we'll be done at 8. That's fine. That's cool? That's fair, yeah. All right, okay. Well, I'm going to skip down to the last one because I think this is a, this is a good one and it kind of segues into what we've all just been talking about here and that's learning from toxic relationships. Um, how can we embrace the lessons learned from toxic relationships, turning pain into growth, becoming stronger and more resilient person and how to avoid repeating the same mistakes in your relationship? How do you go about that, Mr. Striker, married man over there. How can you, how, like, what, what's some advice that you can give to people who are in a long term relationship or wanting to be in a long term relationship to help them avoid doing those toxic behaviors that they just do on habit? I mean, I don't know. It's just kind of basic to me. Yeah. You know, you treat people how you want to be treated, but and like, you realize yeah. that. That's that's your girl. That's your queen. You know. I love that answer actually because like I don't, like I said I don't mean to call you out or anything but like the golden rule like th- things really all are that fucking simple. It really like, is. People think like there's this big like complex like fucking ants like solution of like how to have a successful marriage and like how to be how to be a good husband or how to be a good wife. Like no, it's just it's the golden rule. 
treat people how you want to be treated. Well, like, it is that simple. And, like, the more complex you try to actually make it, that's when you start fucking running into problems. Indeed. So, yeah. what you're saying is, and I don't like being like this, but I'm just going <laughs> to keep it real. If you continually have these same problems where the person's being toxic, first of all, you looked at yourself. Make sure, like, you're not doing that. Make sure you're cha- making the changes. Now, this is if you're not married. If you're married, I still think it's, you got to do whatever you can to try to work it out. Right. But if you're not married, then that's when you got to, like, first of all, I want to say you tried, you, you looked at yourself, like, hard looked at yourself in the mirror and, like, hey, I got a problem. Hey, I got to work on this. You actually really tried to work on this because a lot of people will say, hey, you know, it's like this, but a lot of people won't actually do that due diligence and look at themselves in the mirror and make those changes. That's when you kind of, you might have to be like, hey, this is just not working. That's, mm-hmm. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. Like, but if you're married, I, I, I don't want to say anything because I feel like <laughs> when you're married, you should try to work, try even harder to make something work. Well, should. You really don't have but, much of a choice. Yeah. yeah. And but, that's the thing. You don't have a choice when you're married. People still like to act like they do, but they don't. Mm-hmm. Like, to the, the the divorce rate is so high because people don't value marriage like they used to. Like mm-hmm. your grandparents, it was just looked on worse to be divorced. Yeah, mm-hmm. but but it's not even looked that down upon anymore. To At all, like, not back anymore. Then, like, if your it's gra- so like, normal. Well, I'm saying like when your grandparents were growing up, divorce was like. You would be shunned (laughs) in your community, yeah. Now it's like common. Now they say like the first, like there's a fucking saying. It goes like the first time you marry for love, the second time you marry for money or some shit. Or maybe maybe I'm flipping those two around, but like they have all these dumb little sayings and shit like that because it just shows like I think that's how common divorce is, and like not only how common it is, but but it's become so common that it's not. You don't get shunned. You don't. It's not as looked down upon as it used to be. Marriage is really hard. I think. I hate to say it, but I feel like marriage is super hard for guys. I don't have to say, hate to say it. It is. It just. I think that Mm-mm. most marriages, like, just think about it. What stereotypes about marriage are appealing to men? Is it? Is it the less sex? Is it? Oh, I've I've Does married sex and go down though. When you're fuck married? yeah! Are you kidding me? You have if you have more sex when you're first together than you ever do when you're married. Like when you're first dating, you're hot and heavy. You're doing things that you never thought you'd do because you don't know what she's willing to do. Yeah. Like when you're married. <laughs> but I mean, you know, when you're together for so many years, and yeah. I mean, it gets still depending on who you yeah. are, you know. And a lot of times, it's not the guy's choice. Like it was my up to me. We still be doing that stuff, but. You, a lot of times, you just got to take what you can get. That's but why don't you role think play. as a woman, you should be doing that to make sure your marriage stays healthy and keep your man happy if that's what he wants? Ooh. Absolutely. That's, <laughs> that's why I think, you know, like, I know me and uh, my husband have only been together for a year and a half, but, like, things just get more exciting because, but it's, we have great communication. I don't put him down, and I don't nag at him, and so... With that, you're going to have a lot of, you know, attraction to someone. And, the, and our, our, we just have fun in everything we do. Like, we don't get bored of each other, you know. Mm-hmm. And it, so I think that's really important. I want to say something, too, about my advice for new relationships about being toxic, the topic. Yeah. Um, I think the most important thing that people do when they start a new relationship is give a fresh fucking start. I don't care if every guy you ever talked to was a fucking liar. You can't come into it looking for shit. Oh, he had, you know, my last guy had his phone off when this happened, so that means that this guy must be doing this. You will literally burn it to the fucking ground until someone does something to you and, like, you know, it's odd, but don't go looking for shit. Don't because someone in your past did that this way and start thinking that you have to really... Give everyone a fresh start because. I actually want to say something on that. Um, this is something for guys and girls. I think you actually shouldn't even get into a relationship till you had time to heal over your last one. Because, Absolutely. Because you're putting you're putting yourself in Some the next re- yeah. the next relationship. You're putting it in a in a bad. You're just but starting the way off guys wrong. think the sooner they stick their dick in something else, like it makes getting over. Wait, how no, bad no. do you have it to may, heal after a relationship? May, it depends what kind of relationship you had. You know, like if you're like truly in love with a person, 
and, that, and that's not the same thing. It's like s- stick your Why dick is in that? them. That's one thing. It's sticking because your dick, but like getting love in a is like infatuation these days. Like true love is both of you feeling the same way, not just you going, "Man, I really am just obsessed with this person." Yeah, I agree. And that's rare. Usually, you like somebody way more than they like you, or vice versa, and it's never truly even. And that's why I say when it is even, it's super rare, and it's definitely worth holding on to. But when it comes down to it, like, it's just not like that. Almost no one finds their perfect someone, you know? Most yeah. people going through their life going, good enough. And I don't <laughs> yeah. really think, like, finding the whole perfect someone or the perfect, like, soulmate or whatever, I don't even know if that exists, to be honest. Oh, hell yeah. Are you kidding more, me? But no, I, I, I think it's more of, like, two people that, that do love each other and they choose to be with each other and they choose to make it work every single day. Because marriage and love and, like, long-term relationships, at least, it's hard work. What if it wasn't? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Then it wouldn't, then it wouldn't be as appreciated as much. Says yeah. who? Uh, <laughs> if something comes easy, do you appreciate it? As yeah. More than something if I happens? earned a million dollars or if you gave it to me, uh, okay. I'll take the million any way I can get it. But okay, but okay. I, I don't Wait, agree on, you'll on, appreciate it the same. Wait, okay. What do you appreciate more? Winning $100 million from the lottery or building a $100 million business from the ground up. You, you get $100 million either way. What do you appreciate more? The million, the million. I appreciate my ambition, but I'd rather take the easy money because I didn't have to work so hard for it. Yeah, but I'm saying, but like, that's exactly my point, though. Like, you appreciate things that you have to work hard for. Right, but what you really should appreciate is the rarity and the almost impossibility of finding someone that is perfect for you. Literally, no problems, only fun. That sounds like a fairy book story. That's, yeah, I don't think that is. So if you don't appreciate that, well, you're I, fucking stupid. Not, I, I see what you're saying, dude, but I don't, I don't think that's fucking reality. I get earned. No, it's not, though. That's, what, like, that's why you appreciate me, it. So, <laughs> like, that's like finding the unicorn. Like, exactly. Yes, I, I see what you're saying, but reality is you're not finding that fucking unicorn. Okay. Somebody's got to. Okay. If, for one, was I not on here on the podcast saying, fuck love, I don't want a guy, whatever, and then I get married after a month? Like, but like I said, I disagree with you. I found, and I'm honestly like getting super emotional right now because I'm pregnant, I'm emotional, and I just love my husband so much. <laughs> no, but that's great. It's not, but this is the thing. We have this because we work at it. I, you know, I went to therapy yeah. for years. I know how to react. I know how to be patient. I know how to be loving because of that. If I just was like immature and be like, you know, and disrespectful, you know, but I'm watching fucking YouTube on mm-hmm. how to respect your husband, which one of them says, don't, don't belittle him in front of people yeah. or, you know, tell him like you're wrong in front of people, like shit like that, that women don't realize you can have that magical, you know, cause the attractions there. And everything, and we everywhere we go, people are like, "You guys, you're just we're walking in Target the other day, and people are like this lady is like, you guys are an amazing couple. I just feel your energy. Like we hear that everywhere we go, and it's but it's because we both are letting our egos down, you know. So it's like yes, finding that person, but then also and choosing too. There's times we could have gotten a fight and been like, "Fuck you, bye." But we decided when we got married, we're never gonna give yeah. up on each other, and people don't do that nowadays. No. They're not willing to put in the work. Man, we could go on forever, but it's 8 o'clock. <laughs> I think we, we got caught here. Stri- Stryker's w- wife is blowing him up. We don't want to get him in trouble. Oh, I ain't going to get trouble. Sure he gets home in time so, can, so he can still get some tonight. I ain't getting none tonight. What? It ain't going to happen. Well you, well, you know what? He could get some YouTube views. Tell him about his channel. Yeah. What's the name of your channel? Oh. Stryker Chan. Yep. Find oh. me on YouTube. All about the motorcycle vlogs. See, there we go. You got sh- you got to show love to Striker Chan just yeah. in case you don't get <laughs> none tonight. And we also have had the youngest person on the podcast ever. <laughs> Does he have a name yet or no? His name is De'Aaron Angelo Jones. Uh-oh. Oh, hey. Boy, I'm jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. actually, I actually can't wait for your kid to, like, actually, like, grow up and get to that age where, like, you can show him that co- this podcast. Be like, look, I'm watching <laughs> you right now. <laughs> yeah. That would be cool. Well, okay, thank you for everyone <laughs> tuning in tonight. Thank you for watching. Do you guys have anything last to say before I shut it down? Okay, Double D, we'll start with you. No, man, just be ready for the next time because we're always going to bring the juicy. Yep. Striker <laughs> Chan, I miss you, man.
I, I'm glad you came. Yeah, me it too, was man. Fun time, dude. It was like, definitely fun. I just say love each other out there, man. Like Relationships the hour, are hard. Yeah, this hour and a half fucking flew by, and we didn't even fucking touch. do half the stuff. You said. I have a go- I have a takeaway. I knew, we, I knew we wouldn't get to it, but like, it's good to have. Uh, I, I have a here too. I have a takeaway. I have a takeaway. Let your ego go, so love can flow. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Amen. I think of that. Hallelujah. Yeah. Let your ego go, can love so love can flow, and then strikers quote earlier. Any fight can was it? I'm probably gonna miss it. Any fight can end a relationship. No, it shouldn't though. Any it fight should. could be the last. Any fight. Don't could have be that the mentality though. Those are your Whether two. you have it or not, it's not actually your choice. Well, he, maybe, it maybe is your choice. I could always say I fight for it, but if no. she says she's done, what can I do? Maybe he has she that men- a- mentality to prevent fights. Yeah. Yep. I'm not going to let any fight turn into a breakup because you're my yeah. wife and I love any, you and I'm never going to give up on you. Any fight could be the last. And I choose the Doug life. The Doug life chose me. Peace. <laughs> <Thanks, guys. laughs>